you know, we didn't have a preconceived notion of what works and what doesn't work. Um, I was a caucus director in Iowa, and that's a precinct-based electoral event. There's 1,781 precincts in Iowa, so we had to set up a functioning organization in 1,781 precincts. You can't be in all places at once, so you literally have to depend on volunteers, or what they call their precinct captains. It was a volunteer team-based approach uh, that has been tested and tried and true um, for you know every four years, uh, frankly, uh, in the Iowa caucuses. Uh, but we also had primaries where folks were trying to also build what we call neighborhood teams. Uh, basically, volunteer leaders who make a commitment uh, to do more, uh, to, to own this responsibility, and are the face and the voice of the campaign in their respective uh, community. Um, so, you know, as we traveled, uh, you know, Iowa was great. <laughs> uh, some other states weren't, but it ended up being probably the best thing that happened to the Democratic Party and to our efforts in 2008. Uh, we registered uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Democrats across the country because of that primary. Uh, after Iowa, I went to Nevada. Uh, after Nevada, I went to Minnesota. Uh, after Minnesota, I went to Texas. And then after Texas, I went to Indiana. Uh, if you want to look at any number of those battleground states, and we'll get to them in here in a second, uh, the electorate fundamentally changed because of that primary. And uh, the way that volunteers were treated, uh, how volunteers were utilized uh, and respected, uh, also uh, uh, changed. And because of that, and frankly because of the longevity of the primary, I went through six or seven GOTVs, um, and that's a big deal in America. It's you know sort of the, the end of the road. Um, and a lot of these volunteers would travel from state to state. And so by the general election, they had gone through seven or eight get out the vote efforts. And uh, they were frankly better organizers than the paid staff in some of, uh, uh, some of these states. Um, so uh, I say that because the primary set us up to be in a position in 2008 where um, <coughs> we could expand the map. Uh, so you know the key goal for us, frankly, was uh, one, to protect the Kerry states from 2004 and then target the Bush states that he won in 2004. Um, and, you know, we, Indiana, North Carolina, Virginia, uh, uh, a number of these states, uh, Ohio, or excuse me, Omaha, which is CD2 in Nebraska, uh, switched. That was an electoral vote uh, that uh, we ended up getting. Uh, and, you know, it fundamentally changed uh, the electorate, like I said, but also the composition of the elected body in a lot of these states. We won Nevada, Colorado, New Mexico, Iowa, Indiana, Ohio, Virginia, North Carolina, Florida, Nebraska, too, uh, that were initially Bush states, but now uh, Obama states. Uh, and this, this just gives you the electoral readout, uh, that we went from 252 uh, electoral votes to 365. Uh, I'd like to say that uh, a rising tide lifts all boats. You heard that? So this is basically that. Um, because the president did so well in a number of these places, because Democrats turned out, they voted for uh, Democrats up and down the ticket. They might have come out for the president, uh, but voted for their governor or their senator or their Democratic member of Congress. And we were able to, um, and 2006 was a good year, uh, but we were able to expand uh, uh, the majorities in both houses of Congress uh, because of that work. Um, oops, sorry about that. But we'll just skip ahead. There we go. <laughs> um, uh, so then after 2008, um, we did a number of things. And uh, uh, one of the things that we did in Iowa during the caucus is uh, uh, someone that Tom works with and my mentor, his name's Paul Tews, he was a state director. Uh, he came up with this idea uh, and we painted it in every office in Iowa. It was called Respect, Empower, and Include, R-E-I. And at first I thought it was sort of mumbo jumbo, like feel good language. Uh, but basically what he wanted us to do is we, we wanted to come into these communities and oftentimes what happens is it's a top-down approach, right? I'm the campaign expert, I have a great title, Iowa caucus director, I'm gonna come in here and tell you how to run our operation in your community, even though I've never been to your community uh, and you've lived here for half your life and you've been working in democratic politics for half your life, um, you know, the, the general thought uh, was that I know better. Uh, but we, we revolutionized that and, and, and literally flipped it on, its, flipped it on its, its head. What we would do 
in these communities is we would go in, if the senator was gonna have an event in Iowa, uh, we would sit down and have a kitchen cabinet uh, meeting with leaders. They could either support then Senator Obama or not and ask them what we should do. Where should we have this event? Uh, how many people do you think will show up? Who should we meet with beforehand? Who should we meet with afterwards? Uh, it was just this buying process, something so simple like that, uh, to something much larger. And you'll hear me talk about respect and power include a lot because it's basically you know, the foundation for what we do as an organization. So after 2008, we sent out an online survey uh, to our list of supporters, uh, and it was about a 20 minute survey asking what did they wanna do next? Uh, and we had about 565,000 people respond to that. Uh, in addition to that, we also had a uh, neighborhood team leader summit after the 2008 election. We had about 400 people come into Chicago. Uh, they paid for it on their own, uh, but came in and talked about what did they want to see, both what did they learn in 2008, what worked, what didn't work, but also what did they want this organization to look like moving forward. That's how we came up with the term community organizer, because uh, then Governor Palin uh, used it as sort of a negative comment towards then Senator Obama, and it's something that we felt was empowering. Uh, so we called ourselves community organizers. But we asked them uh, and said, what do you want us to do? And this is what they told us. One, we want to support the president's agenda. And two, we want to continue growing the grassroots in our community. So, shouldn't surprise anyone, Organizing for America was formed in 2009 to support the president's agenda and grow the grassroots. That's what they told us. Our program objectives, uh, organize grassroots support for the president, grow and maintain the grassroots movement, establish a presence in local communities in every state. All 50 states have an office and a staffer. Uh, grow and maintain the Organizing for America online community, uh, and then generate positive earned media. The first thing that we had our staff do once they got on the ground in the state was hold strategy sessions or listening tours. Um, so what we did online, where we got 565,000 responses, we tried to do then offline. Uh, in, in Ohio, for example, we had over 40 of these, where we would have, you know, some were small, 15 to 20 people, uh, some were four or 500 people, where they would come in and they basically say, in Cleveland, this is what we want Organizing for America to look like. We all agree what our goals are, is to support the president's agenda and grow the grassroots locally, um, but this is how we want to tweak it in Cleveland so it's unique to our community. And we had some successes. And I'll talk about some of our failures or challenges too, but we did have some successes. Uh, comprehensive health insurance reform uh, lasted twice as long as the general election. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but it's also uh, deeply, deeply uh, troubling too, but it was twice as long as the general election. Uh, we passed through an Aid and Financial Responsibility Act, the Recovery Act. Uh, we helped uh, appoint uh, two uh, Supreme Court justices. Credit card reform passed. Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act, equal pay for equal work. Uh, SCHIP, which is a state children's health insurance program offering health insurance to millions of, of uh, 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 children across the country. And then uh, the Edward M. Kennedy uh, Serve America Act. Um, now, you know, we weren't responsible for all of these solely, but we certainly played a role in that. And it's something that we feel very, very good about. As an example for health insurance reform, from June of 2009 through March of 2010, uh, our volunteers made one and a half million calls to Congress. Um, 2.7 million people took action. Uh, we shared over 270, or excuse me, 240,000 personal stories about why health insurance reform was important to them personally. Uh, we had member of Congress town halls. I don't know if uh, August 2009 uh, made a splash here like it did in the States, um, but it was a very, very combative time. And uh, we had to rally our supporters to basically try to nullify the Tea Party folks who would show up these member of Congress town halls. And we held over 30,000 local events in all 435 congressional districts. And then it just shows you what we did in the final 10 days. 500,000 calls to Congress, 324,000 letters to Congress, over 1 million text messages. Basically just trying to do everything we can to influence members so that they voted yes. And not to toot our own horn, but Ben Smith did say our organization was a serious asset. Um, after, uh, after that, uh, and as November was coming, um, uh, we reached out to our supporters again and uh, asked, what do you want us to do in 2010? And they basically told us we need to get involved in the local election. I have <laughs> written in my notes here, um, an historically tough cycle. Um, it's an understatement. Uh, 
of a generation, I think. But um, uh, obviously, we had a very, very tough 2010. Uh, so I'm not going to try to sugarcoat and, and uh, you know, slap ourselves on the back for all the great work we did. But there are some things that we are proud of. And uh, even though uh, we lost the House of Representatives, uh, we were able to control uh, uh, the Senate. Uh, we won a number of key governor's races. And although it's tough to you know, explain this to folks, uh, the losses in the House should have been much, much worse than they were. Um, and uh, we feel that uh, what we were able to do uh, helped nullify some of those. Um, and then this is just the final stat. This is the number of voter contact attempts uh, in 2010 compared to 2006. And I'm going to talk about how we you know, see, kind of see that hockey stick, uh, that exponential growth in contacts and attempts compared to 2006 uh, by how we organize locally, um, because it's critically important and it's why we were. We ended up about 80 million attempts uh, in 2010. Um, now, some of the things that we learned, if I had gone back in time when we started in 2009, uh, you know, we're coming off this historic, historic event, uh, and I had no idea what the expectations w were. You know what I mean? Not, I had no expectations of what OFA would be. Uh, we were here to support the president's agenda. In fact, when I first started, I wanted to never, ever talk about cloture or filibuster or any of the things that we ended up talking about for the next two years uh, because I didn't want our supporters to get stuck sort of in the middle of the sausage-making activities in Washington. Uh, but unfortunately, there's just nothing you could do. One, because our supporters wanted to know what was happening, but two, if they were to be effective, they had to know the different steps in the legislative process. Um, so, you know, it's difficult. Campaigns are easy. I mean, it's hard work, but it's relatively simple. You have an election day, you work backwards from that. You need to get to 51% of the electorate. Uh, and uh, for issue advocacy, it's much, much different. Your vote goals are members of the Senate and the House. And ultimately, you don't know for sure what's going to motivate them to vote either yes or no. So you do a whole bunch of things. You hold press conferences in their district. You have members, uh, uh, volunteers call their office. You have folks write letters. You have folks write letters to the editor. You do as many different things as you can. I call it like a, you have a quiver, quiver of arrows. And you just keep shooting, hoping one's stuck. Because ultimately, you just never know what's going to be the, dif the difference between someone voting yes or no. Uh, so we just try to do everything. Elections, though, are much different. You know, elections are a list-building exercise. And you just hope on election day your list is bigger than your opponent's. Uh, 